Hey guys, Automatic Garage back today, and I'm going to show you real quick how I installed this Viair onboard air system on this 2003 excursion here. I've installed air systems in the past on trucks. This is the first one I've done on an excursion. Uh, a little bit different when you're on the viewpoint of you don't want to have your compressor exposed to the elements, um, and you got you don't want to lose your cargo space in the back. Uh, I thought this was just going to be kind of a boring install. It was a little bit labor and time intensive here, so I'm going to show you real quick where and how I mounted everything on this excursion because I didn't see anything else for ideas on uh, where to do this because the customer didn't want the uh, tank in the back of his truck tape in the back of his cargo area taking up space. So let me show you what we did here real quick. So here's the system we installed here. Um, I guess that's the number there, PN10007. It's got everything in the kit now. It comes with this gauge right here, which is not gonna work for powering up or airing up your airbags or running your train horns or something like that. Uh, that'll all be separate. We'll get to that here in a minute and I'll tell you and show you what we're gonna do instead of using that gauge that came in the kit. So since this system says it is dirt and moisture resistant, it's not really meant to be mounted outside of the vehicle, exposed to all the elements and mounted underneath, which is be the only place you have to mount it outside of an excursion will be underneath it. We opted to mount the pump right here. Um, I figured this was a good spot. I put it in here and then I was trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount the, the mounts for this pump. I don't know if you can see them down to the bottom here. So what I did was I cut me a plywood cutout using a cardboard stencil, not stencil, but a cardboard. I cut me a piece of cardboard as a template for this. Cut me a piece of plywood, 3 8 plywood. And then I was able to mount the compressor to the plywood. And then I used two uh, self-tapping sheet metal screws. I think they're inch and a half to go through the plywood and down through the metal down here. Got plenty of clearance back here. This is our air breather hose that I remotely put the air breather back there because it comes with some filters to change for that. The air lines run right down here, come out the back. And uh, what I did at that point was I removed the tail light and got access to running that air line out of the truck there cut a line just or a hole just the right size put a rubber grommet in it which i use rubber grommets anywhere i went through the body and you can see right here where the airline comes up and goes in behind the tail light there and into that compartment i just showed you this is actually a pretty quiet compressor i will show y'all here at the end of the video uh what the the noise level is like inside the truck with all the doors shut um i've already done my air test i let it sit here for an hour um it never even tried to kick on and i checked all my fittings no leaks so we're good to go on that. I'm gonna raise you up, show you where I ran the airlines, where the tank is mounted, and uh, then we'll jump on the inside of the truck. All right, so we mounted our tank on the passenger side frame rail right here. This is the transmission cross member right here. So we mounted right there. The reason I picked this location, it was the one location you can mount on this side where it wasn't pushing up against all the AC and heater lines. Uh, anywhere else I did it, of course you couldn't go any further forward here. Uh, you had this body mount in the way and it was going to be if I came any further back it's going to be in contact with these lines a whole lot um, There's no mounting on the inside of the rail here because of the exhaust everything being exposed to the heat of the exhaust Can't do it on the driver's side. You got fuel lines and everything else in the way And on the outside of the driver's side you have your emergency brake cable line running through here that you don't want to interfere with So that's why I picked that location um, And like I said, he didn't want this in the truck taking up his cargo area in the back So we opted to do that Put the tank drain here. This is going out to our uh, gauges, to our gauge up there. This is going back to our airline that we put on the back of the truck. Let me show you that real quick. So he wanted his air chuck convenient to get to. So we put the air chuck here. Uh, before this had airbags on it and it had both the air ups for the airbags coming out of there. Uh, I figured that's easy to get to, easy to see. You're not bending down under the truck trying to get to it. So we put his air chuck there. All right, back to the tank here. This is our supply coming from the compressor back there. And I just followed the lines right here. Let them follow the path of all the AC and heater lines. Run right back there. Follow the lines there. Our supply line, like I said, goes up there into the tail light. The one that goes to the air chuck uh, breaks off, goes behind this body mount here, makes a nice steady loop and comes out the bumper back there where I showed you the air chuck. So here's your tank, uh, solenoid, whatever valve, pressure valve uh, right here. It's all labeled in the kit, simple to do. Um, the blue wire here is my trigger wire, which is uh, a keyed hot 
So when the key comes on, this has power to run the compressor that way. If this busted a line or something like that, it's not gonna sit out in your driveway and just run the compressor all day long. This is the power wire. <coughs> this is the power wire that comes up and goes to our battery, passenger side hot battery. Here's our two lines coming in. This one comes from his airbags that's gonna go up to the gauges. And this is the, the, the line that comes out of the tank here and is the supply to the gauges. And there's our battery hot that runs up, follows the heater lines up the inside of the inner fender well. And I'll show you that under the hood real quick. All right, there's our power supply hot that I showed you running down the heater lines and down the inner fender well there. I just came over the inner fender here, wires tucked right behind there. And we came over and bolted right where your glow plugs go, um, where your glow plug supply is there. All right, this is our triggered hot wire. This is right here under the steering column with the big plug that goes, it's mounted on your column here. This is the smaller white wire that comes right here out on the bottom top right here. Uh, that's your triggered hot, that's 12 volts with key on and it turns off. This one here that already has a T-tap in it, this is from somebody else doing something else before. This is constant 12 volts, but this is your key 12 volts here. Um, this blue wire comes over runs across the dash. I'm gonna go over to the other side. I'll show you where it comes out. Right, blue wire runs over, comes behind the glove box through the dash here, like I was saying. It's tucked up nice and neat behind there. There it is coming down and it runs down our th underneath our threshold plate here. And then goes down through our rubber grommet right there with the hot supply, which comes, that's, that's your hot for the compressor that comes off of that pressure valve on the compressor and that red wire just comes up goes through the threshold here and then if you remove this you don't have to take this whole panel off to do any of this um, get you a fish wire and feed it up this way you take that cup holder out and you can get your hand on in there get the wire up here and then you can take your fish wire and fish it back there to the back where the compressor's mounted and pull your red wire right through there. So we're back over here at the passenger sign. That's where both of our airlines come up. Like I said, it's grommeted there. They make a nice sweep turn. I've wrapped them both together for coming up here. They run behind the kick panel here. They tuck under the carpet and then they come back out right here, tuck up under the dash. And when we get our gauge, which I will show y'all and, and give you a link to it, it's an actual airlift gauge because this gauge that came with it, you don't have any capabilities to just air up your airbags and stuff. This is for nothing but reading tank pressure. And this is for nothing but turning the compressor on and off if you wanted to do it that way. But he wants to be able to run his airbags and uh, have it on the fly there here in the truck. So we're going to put install that airlift gauge here. So that's why we have the two lines. One goes to the airbags. The other is the supply from the tank down there. So he can air his airbags up from in the truck here. All right, we're inside the truck now. All the windows are up, back hatch is shut. Let y'all hear what the compressor sounds like. This is, like I said, coming on with our keyed hot. That's with the motor running in comparison there. So hopefully this will help you out on installing an onboard air system on an excursion because there wasn't much to, to find online for ideas of where to put this stuff. And uh, like I said, he didn't want the tank in here. So that was the best option I came up with. And uh, anyways, hope this helped you out. This Automatic Garage signing out. Go check out our other videos. We've got a lot of Power Stroke 607367 content on our channel. Uh, we're mainly a Ford channel. Um, check our website out, automaticgarage.com. If you're in the West Tennessee area looking for somebody to work on your Power Stroke, uh, Get in contact with us. Uh, emails on the website also, and uh, we'll see if we can help you out. Anyways, we'll catch y'all later.